we learn the differences between plants and animals and, and we learn about uh, uh, nucleus we learn about mitochondria we learn about chloroplast and last session we learned about endoplasmic reticulum what are the functions of endoplasmic reticulum we will from there let us start our session today endoplasmic reticulum like we already understood there are two types r e r and s e r r e r is rough endoplasmic reticulum which has ribosomes on it and ribosomes function is to synthesize proteins so protein synthesizer protein synthesizer r e r is protein synthesizer and s e r does not have ribosomes on it it looks smooth but it produces lipids lipids and proteins are synthesized by endoplasmic reticulum what else uh, is its function let us see er endoplasmic reticulum is spread throughout the cell and it frames it looks like a framework in the endo uh, cytoplasm framework appearance it gives a framework of appearance and what does it do it transports certain substances in the cytoplasm from one part of the cell to the other part so it also helps in transportation it helps in transportation it gives a framework to the cell inside the cell to the cytoplasm and important thing is ser let us see what is its importance in some of the vertebrates in some of the vertebrates they are present in liver cells and what is its function particularly in liver cells it helps in helps in detoxifying poison and drugs now you may be getting a doubt why will why will a vertebrate or a we are also vertebrates why will a person take poison it's not poison by mistake if we take anything which is not suitable to our body then it is uh, uh, like like almost like a poison and drugs here in, uh, what does it mean is medication if these two are there in our body they are detoxified by ser so it in a way it is helping our body to recuperate from this toxic uh, substances and their effects so let us see once again er protein synthesizer lipid synthesizer it gives a framework and it helps in transportation and helps in detoxifying in some of the vertebrate liver cells this is about endoplasmic reticulum what is the uh, how is it made up and how does it look like like yesterday in our previous session we learned this is how it looks like and it has the same for cell membrane what type of uh, uh, structure it has the same structure this also has for endoplasmic reticulum so it also uh, that's the reason it helps in transportation transportation here it takes place through the principle of diffusion so that is about endoplasmic reticulum now let us see let us see our next organelle that is golgi complex golgi complex we can also call it as golgi apparatus so golgi complex uh, first person who identified them in the cell is camillo golgi in 1878 he noticed that under compound microscope that time when he noticed it he noticed it like uh, uh, some uh, a complex material which is present in the cell but he did not clearly understand the structure of the cell that clear structure of the cell could be noticed only when observed under electronic microscope but still because he is a 
Gold is being present in innumerable number. 
certain activities in our body for certain life processes and enzymes help it certain um, many activities which are going in our going on in our body so let us see once again golgi complex what is the function first they fill the sac like structures they are packed they are stacked they are stored next they are sent towards the cell membrane what is the purpose of it for repairing the cell membrane or to send it out of the cell this we call it as secretion so they are present in more number in places where in cells where hormones and enzymes are released so this is golgi complex and it's first it sends to cell membrane the other things it will send to an organ called lysosome it will send to another organ called lysosome it is very tiny organ which is present both in plants and animal cells also and what is the purpose of sending that to lysosomes most of the important things all the proteins and like it send all it will send towards cell membrane the cell membrane is made up of lipids and proteins and lipids and proteins are produced by rer i mean rer produces proteins ser produces lipids with the help of these two a cell membrane is produced the cell membrane is formed with the proteins and lipids now the rest of the things which are of no use for the cell they are sent to lysosome why why are they sent to lysosome useful ones are sent towards cell membrane and the base of the cell are sent towards lysosome here what is the purpose of the lysosome in the beginning scientists were wondering what is happening to the cell some of the organelles are suddenly digested but the cell is intact what is happening then they realize that a tiny structure is present in the cell and they named it as lysosome then they realize that this lysosome is a sac like structure sac like structure which is present in both plant cells and animal cells also what is its function usually it is present but it does not show any activity it will show its activity only when there is a need for that what is a time of need let us see when there is something very irregular activity going on in the cell and when there is some danger or some foreign material entering into the cell and it is disturbing the activities of the cell then the lysosome will collect that and it has destructive enzymes in it it has destructive enzymes always remember enzyme means i am talking about proteins destructive enzyme in it and this destructive enzymes they digest the foreign material and put it in the cell in case this uh, destructive enzymes are unable to protect the cell from the foreign material they digest the all the organelles in the cell and digest the cell by all by itself that means when the cell is becoming a liability for the remaining cells and it will not help that particular cell to function properly and because of this it is becoming a danger to the other cells then the lysosome will burst open and release all the destructive enzymes and these enzymes will digest all the organelles inside the cell and digest the complete cell itself that's why this is it is killing its own cell it is killing its own cell that's why it is called suicidal bag of the cell suicidal bag of the cell so today we learned about golgi complex and we learned about lysosome these two are important structures organelles which are present in a cell next let us see what is the next one that is we just we need to uh, walk back here sorry we need to understand that our cell organelles every single cell organelle that is present is having a vital role to play in case any one of these the organelles is not functioning properly having any dysfunction then the whole cell will be uh, getting upset because of that so there is a balance of activities going on in the cell that is what we need to learn to appreciate now vacuole vacuole is present usually only in plant cells and if you can observe this take a uh, for this uh, it's not if you want to observe a vacuole under the microscope we need to take a succulent plant succulent plant for example cactus 
take dactyls and take a cross section of it, thin cross section of it, and the thin layer put it in water and then carefully mount it on a slide and observe it under the microscope. We notice a big vacuole inside the cell. Complete cell is occupied by the vacuole and it is filled up with liquid, fluid. And what is its function? It is completely filled up with the fluid and what is its function? Its function is to give turgid pressure. Turgid pressure or turgidity. Turgidity to the cell from inside. From outside the cell will be receiving pressure and from inside the vacuole is giving exerting pressure so that the cell is intact. The cell is not suffering or bursting open because of the pressure which is being coming from outside. So that, that, that is the first function, turgidity. The second function is it helps in export. Oh, you will be wondering what is this important export which is going on in the cell. Of course, export of all the waste matter. Suppose the cell is uh, getting, for example, lysosomes, they destroy the unnecessary unwanted things. And there are other things which are supposed to be exported, sent out of the cell, which can be done through vacuole. Exporting it is sending out of the cell, that's why we call it as export. So, this is about vacuole. Next, when we are observing, in this lesson we have learned that uh, mitochondria can be observed under uh, microscope uh, by cutting a leaf and all that. And then chloroplast can be observed and cell wall, cell membrane can be observed, Mitoc um, what is it, uh, Golgi complex can be observed and vacuole can be observed. And when you are observing all these things, you might have noticed that on the microscope we can see the cell being flat. Flat cell. We see that the cell is looking flat. Only two dimensions. Two dimensions only we are able to see because we are seeing under the microscope. Two dimensions. Is the cell two dimensional? If it is two dimensional, where is the cytoplasm? Is it simply uh, like that? Now you will be having the doubt. If you try to visualize things, then it is not possible for us. How is it possible for the cytoplasm to be there and the three dimensional organelles being there but the cell is looking flat? So you want to observe that, it is easy to notice. Actually, we can see the length and the width of the cell, two dimensions. Now you want to see the thickness of the cell. Then what we can do is we can do this also. If you want to see the thickness, we are able to see, we are able to see the length, we are able to see the uh, width also of the cell. Now you want cannot see, we are unable to see, can't see the thickness. Now if you want to see or observe the thickness of the cell and understand that this is not 2D but it is a 3 dimensional structure then what you are supposed to do is change the focal length, focus sorry, change the focus. Usually when you are focusing on what are you focusing? You are focusing on the organelle which you want to observe but now what you have to do is you have to change the focus, change the focus towards the wall cosmos. So, if you want to understand that it is a three dimensional, just nothing we have to do. Just change the focus. Change the focus and view the cell wall. Cell wall is also noticed if you can uh, focus on cell wall and then you will notice the thickness. And if you want to observe it more clearly, just change the light tip also. Light tip also, if you can change it and... Uh, Okay children, so till now we learnt about all the organelles which are present in a cell. But you might be getting a doubt after seeing all the cells under the microscope, are they two dimensional? Are they two dimensional? No, they are not two dimensional, they are actually three dimensional structures. But when we are observing under the microscope, we can see only two dimensions. That is, we can see uh, length. Length of the cell we are able to see. We can see even the width. What we are unable to see is the thickness. We are unable to see the thickness. If we can see the thickness, then we understand that the cell is three dimensional. Now, uh, change how to observe the cell like a three dimensional structure with the microscope in our own lab is just change the focus. 
What you are focusing at usually when we are focusing, we are focusing at the ordinary which we want to observe. This time, change the focus and try to view the cell wall. That means we have to come to edge of the cell and there you have to focus more. Next, adjust the lighting and make it, make it a little darker. Then, if you can adjust the lighting and view the cell wall, then you will understand that the cell is not flat but it is three dimensional structure. So, this is all about the cell. Next, finally, let us try to understand who proposed the cell theory. In the beginning of this uh, lesson, I told you about cell theory. We need to understand this well first. Who are the people who postulated the cell theory? Who propounded the cell theory? Um, Sleden. In 1801, 1804 to 1881 and Sean Theodore Sean from 1810 to 1882 but the cell was actually discovered by Robert Hooke who 200 years back in the 1600s itself Robert Hooke discovered the cell but we could understand the cell theory only in this years, after 200 years. So what could be the reason? It doesn't mean that the other scientists could not understand what it is about. That what actually what did they say? They said that every cell, every organism, sorry, every organism is made up of cells. Every organism is made up of cells. The second one they said is that the structure and function of the cell, the structure and function of an organism depends on the cell. Depends on a cell. After learning about all the organisms and their functions, this we need to agree to. These two are the postulations propounded by Sladen and Sean. So before that nobody has identified the fact is there are many scientists who have come to the conclusion that every organism is made up of a cell. But nobody was bold enough like that to tell the world that this is about the cell. Only these two people were bold enough. That's why they got the name as the cell theory propounders. And but this became incomplete. This was not a complete thing. One more thing has to be there was a doubt. Then from where are these cells arising from? That answer these two people could not give. So we need to add one more prominent person, Virchow. He, after few years, he made the final postulation that, that is every pre-existing cell, every cell exists, arises from the pre-existing cell. He finally made it clear and now the cell theory is complete. One question these two people could not answer was how are the cells formed? Then Virchow, he came and he said every cell arises or exists from a pre-existing cell. That means there should be one cell from that cell only the other cells also can arise. Now with these three postulations the cell theory is complete. So we need to remember three more prominent names when we are thinking of cell theories. Britain, Sean and Virchow. So finally we have come to the conclusion of this lesson. And if you read the textbook and you get any doubts, you can always contact me uh, regarding this. If you can't understand, go through this video two, three times and read the text. If you have any doubts, always I am there to accept your doubts. Thank you very much. Have a good day.